episode 95 of Strange Brow Radio. I'm again your host, Tobe Johnson, and we have another installation of Ales and Tales for you, which is a little early. Once in a while, it's a little bit late. Sometimes it's a little bit early, so I think the last one we did was episode 90, so I guess that's about right. My friend Alex Whitcomb and I toss back, at least I do, a libation. And this time we talk uh, UFO footage and more OBE experiences. And uh, Alex is planned to be your sketch artist of choice for cryptids. So I'll tell you more about that in a second. Ales and Tales, we'll be right back. Alright, Ales and Tales with Alex in one moment, but first I need to mention promptly the second annual Sasquatch Rendezvous, October 3rd and 4th, a free event. That's the 3rd and 4th from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, a free virtual webinar. What could be better than free? You can join up at SasquatchRendezvous.com. There you'll get a link and there will be a itinerary. There should be the full list of speakers as well as the times they speak. And there you can stream us. Watch us live on Facebook. Watch us on Zoom. If you want to see us on Facebook, it's at the Strange Brow Radio Facebook page. And there you just uh, wait and see for the appropriate time. 9 p.m., 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the 3rd and the 4th will start. There's also an events tab. You can look up that event as well, Sasquatch Rendezvous. Also, this will be a Bob Gimlin special. We have footage of Bob live from a Bigfoot hotspot. It's pre-recorded 4K footage that's less than a week old, and it's at least two or three hours long. Uh, So we're going to show quite a bit of that so you want to see that because if you hadn't had a chance to sit down with bob and uh, maybe hear some off the record stories from what i can tell definitely and the stranger side of sasquatch will be broached and what's bob's opinion on it well you got to come to the conference to see that also mel scahan uh, will be uh, sitting shotgun to bob During this interview, you may have seen him on Expedition Bigfoot. He's a Yakima Native American, I think a state official that uh, works up that way with the tribe. Lots of interesting stories about Sasquatch and other stuff. Also, gosh, a big list. Go check it out. Myself, Daryl Adams, the documentary crew will be on board. Lots and lots of other people. Go check it out at SasquatchRendezvous.com. Okay, also, stay around for the end of the show here regarding my last comments and the mystery women. I have an update on the audio that we've been calling the mystery women, and I will let you know the surprising information that I've got. Okay, here we go, Ales and Tales with Alex Whitcomb. All right, Alex, are you with me? I am. Tony. Okay. How are you? You have a crystal clear transmission. That is a good thing here. We, uh, Wonderful. We're speaking um, in the wee hours here, we'll say. For me, at least, it used to be the wee hours, but now I'm seemingly burning the midnight oil a lot more, and you're going to bed earlier. And um, we should paint the picture that uh, Alex is in his private studio, which in this case is his pickup truck. And I just got a glimpse of Alex uh, <laughs> smuggling uh, a quick little look in the camera there. and So are you doing this all on your camera phone? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, it sounds good. It looks good. And um, as with any ales and tales, uh, one of us usually cracks something open. So uh, tonight uh, this broadcast is brought to you by Tequila, the fine folks of uh, Hornitos, have uh, not bought me anything, but rather sold me uh, uh, some libations <laughs> here. So I have uh, already poured myself uh, half a shot, 
And uh, I think I'll wait for shot number two. But as far as uh, tequila goes, I know that you can go to the Patron aisle and, and splurge. But I think a, a shot of uh, Hornito Silver will do you just fine. It'll cost you half the price. And it's a it's just a really nice after dinner, uh, you know, after COVID shot to do. And so... Instead of a beer, instead of a glass of wine, Ales and Tales is brought to you by uh, a shot of tequila. Well, I did finally actually, I, I found my bottle opener. Yeah. Tell tell people exactly what you've got. Okay, I got a Stella. Artois, mm-hmm. in the bottle, crisp and cold. It's been sitting in the fridge for the last couple months. <laughs> I bought it for a beach party, and we I only had like two at the beach party. So uh, I've, I reached into the very back of the fridge and pulled out the pulled out the Stella because I because I stopped drinking I totally forgot to go out and get my customary nice beer for ales and tails. So that's what I got going on. Yeah, and now I was, I was going to make it a, a a kind of a brassy sassy sassy, but uh, we didn't have any <laughs> grapefruit or orange juice in the house. <laughs> right. All right, man. So um, you had the gauntlet passed down towards you, and it was a strange stroll that came your way. As where now, I've only had two of these so far. And again, just to ex- uh, explain to the audience, if this is your first download of Strange Brow Radio, a strange stroll is your choose your own adventure time, where you can pick via uh, our Patreon page or our Facebook page. A strange stroll, and that is basically a 30-minute or more alone challenge where uncut footage happens in a destination of your choosing. So when I was a kid, it was Green Slime was your choose-your-own-adventure book, and if anybody remembers those, you <laughs> you pick the page that you go to next after you reach the end of a certain challenge or chapter in the book, and then you either survive or don't survive or in some of these cases uh you know pandemonium ensues but in our case the audience uh, gets to choose where the youtube clip will end up so so far i've been to hidden hill cemetery which was a blast and then i went to the uh abandoned farmhouse or the condemned farmhouse and um in your case the audience picked Toba Inlet, which is the home of Albert Osman and the incredible story, the night, I believe you said 1920s. 1924, was, yeah. So the remind Albert people. Osman encounter. Right. Remind people who Albert Osman is and what happened at Toba Inlet. Okay. Albert Osman was a British Columbia uh, resident. Uh, he was a prospector. And he, in 1924, he decided to go prospecting uh, Toba Inlet Way. So he got uh, one of the local natives to uh, drop him off there with all his supplies. And he spent uh, a good night and a day picking around, looking for, uh, looking for gold deposits. And uh, he got snatched right in the middle of the night. Uh, in his sleeping bag he got snatched and carried off for three hours and eventually found himself in the midst of a family of sasquatch a mother father and uh two two little ones or teenagers i should say spent a couple days with them and eventually he uh he coerced the uh the the male sasquatch to uh imbibe in his uh snuff box uh which the apparently the male sasquatch got violently ill and uh albert made his escape so i did not know for the longest time that that was basically right across the way from me and when i discovered that i was like oh my god i gotta go there eventually so i did pick it for one of the strange for the strange stroll for alex's strange stroll uh but it doesn't look like i'm gonna get there anytime soon because the weather 
shifted and my little boat is, I don't think, up to the task. Uh, the the other one was the the other choice was the haunted uh, Harriet Bay Inn on Quadra Island, which I have stayed there before and had definitely had some experiences there before. So, okay, so I just have to disagree with you, Alex. As far as uh, captivating, riveting footage, I can't think of anything better than your little boat unseaworthy as it is struggling <laughs> on live on camera to get to a bigfoot hot spot so i want you to consider for the audience who who loves and adores you to uh, i i'm totally considering if the weather gets better yeah i will do that you know if i if we if it looks like we're gonna have a good like two to three day period of like nice calm weather and sunshine yep totally but uh, uh this is my new boat i have no experience boating and i this boat is entirely new to me <laughs> so for, yeah. for a first round uh, uh yeah but i love it'll, the it'll be good I, footage i love the circumstances <laughs> that could happen here a new boat owner headed to a bigfoot hot spot um it could be amazing footage so uh We'll we'll just uh, we'll try to coerce you to uh, save this challenge just for a little bit to see if the weather lightens up. If not, off to uh, Harriet Bay Inn where yeah. g- ghosts await and maybe Toba Inlet later. So um, yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so you've got uh, you've got a camera at the ready. You've got a recorder at the ready. I do. And yeah. um, got your old task cam. Yeah, at well, the ready. Yeah. yeah, and I I have been tasked to bring uh, was it a trigger object, so we'll see what that's going to be. Um, uh, but I did contact the, uh, the owner of the Harriet Bay Inn. He's granted me full access to the place at the in the wee hours, mm-hmm. the attic, uh, the basement. Uh, yeah, so that should be fun. Okay, and uh, you know the ghost hunting thing is never anything that I ever intended to get involved with with the show. You know, it just was never an interest to me just based upon the fact that so much of it's baloney. And so, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it just seems so ambiguous. And I didn't really feel as though I could ever have discernment totally and be comfortable with it totally just based upon where my worldview is. But when you look into uh, the Sasquatch conundrum, you will bump into... UFOs, you will bump into ghosts, you will bump into all these other things. So I, I actually downloaded a um, an app on my phone the other day. Um, and now I downloaded a couple different apps before in regards to looking into the supernatural, including Randonautica. And we've talked a little bit about my strange trip to uh, finding an obelisk hidden in, the, hidden in the woods near my house. Then we uh, ran into... Maury Island, and I was directed yeah. to a spot where slag was hidden in the forest. And if you know the Maury Island story, then you know the fact that uh, there was slag reported in that case in Maury Island, Washington, near Vashon Island. And then I downloaded next a uh, another um, DR60, uh, I guess you would call this a, a voice generator. It is called uh, Necrophonic. And so you see necrophonic on a lot of these ghost shows where they break open their phone and basically um, it, it, it supposedly will communicate with the, uh, the non-living and you'll get uh, some kind of full statement from them. But a couple days ago I downloaded an actual Ovulus app and I think it was $1.99 or something like that. So let me... Um, let me see if I can grab this app here, and uh, we will... Yeah, I have, I have not heard of this one. Yeah. So the, the Ovulus is a... Uh, I think it has 2,500 words in its data bank that you... That whoever can choose from to uh, communicate back and forth with you. And I've been using it off and on in the Helda and Bobby trailer to see if I could privately get any kind of confirmation about all these sounds here. Now, if you haven't followed on the Helda and Bobby dollhouse situation, 
You can go to SoundCloud and type in Helda, H-E-L-L-D-A, and Bobby's Dollhouse, B-O-B-B-Y-S, or type in Strange Brow Radio. Put that all in uh, SoundCloud. And I think there's 30 days worth of anomalous sounds. Now, although... Uh, I didn't capture really any money shots auditorily. There is some strangeness there, including a very strange camera anomalies, uh, camera footage that went on for 13 plus hours and saved to the internal memory. There was uh, an orb that was uh, looked like it was... Well, this orb did not self-illuminate. It almost looked like uh, rhinoceros skin, which sounds strange. Uh, but so... it, Wild. It's very wild, and it was very close, and it was, uh, for orb's sake, um, this was, you know, maybe five seconds and less than two feet from me as it moved from right to left through the wall. And I was... hope you have that just burned into your mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, what's really incredible is I found somebody else who's seen this, which I never oh, expected to... Uh, to find another person who would describe exactly what I'd seen. Because I was ready to call it a black orb, which sounds so Mm -hmm. ominous. But um, in review, it was a translucent, grayish, organic hide, like a skin, uh, elephant or or rhinoceros. Yeah. So um, very strange. So those are the things that happened in Hilda and Bobby's... uh, dollhouse but um trying to find my ovulus here while i'm talking to you on the air um let me look over here and see if i can find this thing i know i had it oh here we go okay so the the ovulus here let me tell you what it's been saying to me lately while i'm inside the trailer the the three big phrases that i hear over and over again are shoes the word wheat the word fear and then pendant and it won't let off those four words so i'm going to see what it has to say here now and we'll go ahead and just do an on-air example of this so i'm bringing up yeah yeah the, I'm curious uh, the i ovulus handheld paranormal device and it looks like all the other ovuluses it just has the iphone logo in front of it so um let's drop a specific question here and um Let's ask it uh, what, well, let's see. Let's ask uh, what awaits on Toba Inlet. So if anybody's listening, I just want you to tell uh, the audience here what awaits on Toba Inlet. So I'm going to turn it on. Let me turn up the volume here. Let me turn it on. I got to make sure that everything's working properly. All right. Here we go. Ovilus on. (laughs) <laughs> let's see now it's thinking and uh we'll see if it answers our question again the question is what is on toba inlet it doesn't just immediately hop to a word sometimes it takes a few minutes for it to do it so um i'll give it a second here and see if uh it comes okay. up with a statement Probably gonna say fear. <laughs> <laughs> right now, if it drowning, does, drowning. <laughs> right, right. If it does say fear, then I'll be I'll be skeptical. And not not many of the reviews here were very kind to this app, but uh, yeah, you know, they're a little bit like a party favor until they're not. I I think that uh, whatever's going on here can manipulate these electronic devices to do all sorts of unexpected things. And uh, as it stands right now, it's still thinking. So in a way, that's a little bit comforting for the fact that it's not immediately saying something okay. pr- provocative. You know? And you... like ahead. the other apps, like it, it uh, acts as like a tool of intention, do you think? I think so. Um, and so my intention is right now to uh, be... Uh, semi-skeptical over the fact that they just suckered away $1.99 off me, but yeah. uh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe just me. Now, I will tell you that it did give me a name uh, regarding uh, when I was in the trailer doing this a couple of nights ago, and it said the name Frank. Um, oh. So that was pretty interesting. Now, did it mean like, hey, frankly speaking, or did it mean yeah. a name? 
we don't really know, but um, I, I, I don't really recall if it was, it was uh, in regards to a question I had about who haunts the trailer. I did ask if anybody died in there. Um, I know that there's been some farmers uh, that have passed on that have been seen on or around the property. I don't know if their name is Frank. But hmm. right right now, it's uh, frankly not saying anything at all. So we'll just leave it here. And uh, if it pipes in, then we'll talk about it. All right. Okay. So uh, and maybe the uh, Harriet Inn happens first. Now, my question to you is, is that going to be a solo challenge? Because you've had, uh, you have a girlfriend now, and uh, she's into yeah. all this stuff. So, oh my God, she's into all this. Yeah, totally. In fact, okay. one of the fir- one of the first questions she asked me, uh, we were on a walk in the woods, and and uh, we stopped on a bridge, and we were just contemplating the river for a couple of minutes, and and she looks up at me, she's like, "Would you ever want to like go to a haunted house and stay overnight and record things?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh my God." Yes, of course. <laughs> so yeah, she's totally in. She was she was a little like uh, uh, about the Toba Inlet just because it's a uh, you know uh, a good hour hour and a half away boat ride and camping overnight in grizzly territory. So, uh, but uh, yeah, she's all into the to the Harriet Bay Inn, and uh, yeah, that'll be a that'll be a duo adventure. Okay, so this could turn into. You know, all sorts of uh, interesting, uh, you know, a romantic situation could ensue. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it could be Harriet Bay. We're not going to film that. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Harriet Bay gone wild. We don't know. (laughs) All right. I know. Well, okay. So. We'll uh, we'll wait eagerly to to see what you grab there. Now the the I Ovulus is still thinking. I've never actually seen it uh, not generate a word. Uh, oh, did you hear that? Uh, what was that? Okay, November. So it said November Legion. Legion, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, weird. that is kind of weird. Uh, the first word it said was Legion. The next yeah. word it said is November. Okay. And uh, there's all sorts of speculation about November being a, in a big shit show, and so yeah. that's uh, that's pretty interesting. Of course, Legion, uh, if you're thinking about the occult, uh, in specific anything that has to do with the demonic realm, Legion is a name of a specific demonic entity. So that's that's pretty interesting. Oh, that's true. Right. Yeah. Huh. Um, so we'll see what happens here. I'll set it off to the side. Uh, in other news, uh, there has been some UFO stuff that's been happening. Now, the big one that happened was... Oh, well, hold on a second. Here, we, got a, we got a new telepathy? word here. So we have Legion, November, and now we have telepathy. Wow. Yeah. So let's, yeah. Uh, let's see where this goes. I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume down here, and I'll update you as it goes on. Sure. In the uh, in the UFO world, there has been uh, all the speculation about the Goodyear blimp being a UFO. Now, <laughs> that could be a black ops operation going on. I'm not, you know, I can't, we can't say for certain, but uh, it certainly so looked let me, like. Let a, me get this straight. There, there's speculation about the Goodyear blimp actually being a UFO. Is that well, what you said? No, that's just me being a, a jerk. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But what do you think of that footage that came forth? Now, it seemed to show a scroll board underneath it where you would see an advertisement and then it showed an FAA blinking light. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, the one the uh, the YouTube you sent or or posted, it was a whole compendium of uh, a conglomeration of people's shots from everywhere. Right. Random people. And uh, it was all clipped into clipped into one, so you could see different angles. Um, and yeah, at first you kind of get into it because all the people who are you kind of get into the excitement. Oh my god! Oh look at that! Oh the traffic is stopping! Oh there's a goddamn UFO up there! And uh, it looks cool, like 
right there you know it looks cool but it's not doing anything and then you look closer and yeah you you see the the led kind of scroll board and the blinking light and ah, no it's not doing anything ufo-ish it's not floating like a leaf or doing erratic movements or displaying like super odd behavior and yeah yeah it's it didn't take long to to look into it and oh yeah that's a blimp now did you um let me ask you this did you see the fact that the blimp uh looked kind of stealthy it it looked skinnier than just your average blimp well I, i think that was atmospheric uh atmospheric conditions like you couldn't you couldn't see the the whole outline of the blimp uh due to well i guess that was in the big city where where was that anyways it was in uh new jersey i think okay yeah so yeah you know smog smog there yeah and uh you know you can you can see it you know the haze and especially what with the you know if, if there was one picture where it was focused in you still couldn't see like the whole out, outline of the blimp, but you could definitely see the tailpiece and the light, and you could tell that it was the Goodyear blimp with the writing there. But right. It, it wasn't yeah. nearly interesting enough to hypothesize anything cooler. It, it, it was about no. the right size, and, you know, and the details about I what it was. I got excited, but then it was deflated. <laughs> Oh, no pun intended. Yeah. And it, who knows? It might have been over a stadium. We don't even know where it was floating. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Fo- football season is in full gear. I, I don't know what stadiums would be out that way. But um, interesting to uh, to see everybody, including myself, say, "Oh, you know, this might be worthy of looking at." I mean, it made it made national news. It was everywhere for yeah. a couple yeah. days. So. <laughs> So did it make national news as a UFO or did it get debunked like super quickly? No, I think it made national news as an anomalous object, which was really strange. Yeah, because... That's really weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, it's pretty I don't bizarre. Get that. What, like, uh, I don't, I don't see how these things aren't debunked uh, quicker. Right. Um, like, I don't understand that. Yeah. I don't either. So if anybody doesn't know what we're talking about, I'm sure you can find it. Just type in New Jersey UFO and you'll see people pulled over to the side of the road. Hundreds of people pulled over to the side of the roads all over uh, filming. But maybe... Oh, I would have been too. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Now the, no, I figured uh, it out. the next footage I want to bring up uh, has to do with uh, lesser reviewed footage here. And it's pretty darn interesting. Now this is uh FLIR footage from Afghanistan. Have you seen this? I don't think I have. Okay. You want to forward that to me? Yeah. So okay. let me read you the headline here. Um, and the uh, I ovulus just said the word legion again, just so people know. So now we're mm. on. Uh, and again, the question was not about anything to do oh. with November. It had to do with uh, Toba Inlet. So you got to stick to message here. <laughs> um, going back yeah. to this article. Uh, Pentagon, Pentagon declines comment on UFO video of Afghanistan. So uh, according to the Ordo News, this video was made by the U.S. military in Kandahar province of Afghanistan and then uploaded to the network via 2011. The U.S. military refused to comment on it, but yesterday in response to public requests, Susan Goh, spokeswoman for UAP, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, gave an official response. Okay, so that's an interesting paragraph because we have a name, we have the word UAP, and uh, we have a date, 2011 2011 in Kandahar province. Of course, Kandahar is noted also for the Kandahar Giants. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In quotes here, it says, from Susan, apparently, uh, I can't say anything about the origin or the authenticity of this video. I have nothing more for you. Video was recorded now, she, from... She's, a, she's from the UA, UAP task force? Is that correct? Right. It doesn't say what yeah. uh, who she's associated with. It says U.S. military uh, and the word UAP. So as far as like oh, certain okay. places is attached to, I'm not quite sure. Uh, a tip or anything like that isn't mentioned. Uh, it goes on to say video is recorded from a surveillance tower using night vision fire control systems. 
Well, it doesn't look like night control. It looks like FLIR, so that's a little bit iffy. Four UFOs appeared over the mountain and released garlands of smaller objects raining down. Interestingly, Ooh. to support the U.S. military base near which these events took place, the Warthog was called the A-10 plane, which attacked two of the four objects. But when the smoke from the explosion cleared, it became clear that the A-10 attack did not inflict harm to the objects, and they didn't even move a centimeter. A very interesting video, especially in light of the fact that the Pentagon continues to refuse to explain what happened on that day in Afghanistan. Moreover, the appearance of such objects during the war in Afghanistan was reported in different years by many U.S. personnel. So what you'll see here, if you type in uh, YouTube, the word Afghanistan UFO or Kandahar, Afghanistan 2011 UFO, FLIR footage or night vision footage, are four cylinders floating over the Kandahar Mountains. And it's dated uh, May 3rd, 2011. They are in a chevron shape. They're probably fairly large given the distance that they look that, like they're at. And on this FLIR footage, you will see what looks like molten slag, which again goes back to Maury Island, raining down on the mm -hmm. valley floor. And then something fires a shot from right to left and uh, does no damage to it. So it's really interesting footage. It's, uh, you know, over nine years old. And uh, I've never seen it before. So check out the uh, Afghanistan UFO. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Can't seem to can't seem to find it. I'll uh, I'll look it up. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I can uh, I can uh, direct you here. Let's see here now. If you go into uh, Pentagon Pentagon de declines comment on UFO video in Afghanistan, it should directly come up because uh, that's what I'm looking on. Uh, again, Pentagon declines comment on UFO video in Afghanistan. Okay. And I'll let you take a look. And while uh, you're finding that, um, and some more FLIR footage has surfaced up here. Again, it's the uh, Puerto Rican FLIR footage from, I believe, a helicopter, which is watching a single ball a UAP move from uh, right to left. And they are tracking this thing uh, flying over Puerto Rico and it flies into the sea and submerges. It loses no speed. It, uh, it is still traced as it goes into the water and loses no speed. And then as it pops out, it comes out as two spheres. Now this has been around for, gosh, at least three years um, off and on, but it's uh, making another round here on social media. And that's another really compelling one. Now, that one's never been debunked, debunked as far as I know. And I don't know of any drone that can pop into the water, especially a tidal water with waves and a tide coming in and not lose no. speed. No. No. <laughs> no. So, we do not have that drone capability as, <laughs> as I'm aware of. And this is what they say about that. To give a description, the UFO splits into two and splashes over water leaked U.S. security footage of a confirmed UFO. The object in the video appears to look like a metallic sphere, which moves fairly quickly over the land and then into the ocean and seems to tumble and change shapes, almost like the UFO is morphing into something different. The SCU have confirmed that the leaked footage has come from DHS whistleblowers. Uh, they do not wish to be named. Apparently, since the video has been released by the SCU, quite a few other witnesses come forward, confirm the sighting. The SCU apparently spent two years reviewing the footage and building up an in-depth report. It has been confirmed at least six times by scientists and researchers who have been named against this project. UFO incident allegedly started about 9.20 p.m., on April 25th, 2013, at the Rafael Hernandez Airport in Puerto Rico. It was monitored by the crew of the DHC-8 turboprop aircraft, aircraft from U.S. Customs and Border Protection Control, who are part of the uh, U.S. DHS. Recent leaked video one of what appears to be a UFO coming out of the sea and apparently splitting into two alleged uh, 
Kraft belong to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and has got truth seekers all over the world starting uh, stating that this is the real deal and could not possibly be anything else. The video alleged to have leaked uh, all from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security shows a UFO being tracked by a thermal imaging camera recently appeared online. Almost four minutes long, the video is being taken seriously by UFO and alien researchers all over the world and was placed online by a group calling itself the Scientific Coalition of Ufology. I guess that's where SCU comes in. According to the SCU website, its researchers confirm that the UFO exhibits characteristics that cannot be explained by any known aircraft or natural phenomena. And again, that is the UFO Puerto Rico FLIR footage. Now, both of those are uh, quality uh, videos to look at, far different than yeah. the, uh, the footage that we got with the Goodyear blimp. So, well, I just I just saw the Afghanistan one, and yeah, it was it was weird. It was almost like watching uh, like a video game, like a first person player video game where they're just like scanning around and then focusing in on the slag is weird coming out of those things. Holy cow! Yeah, it's enough to say it's a good fake. I mean, it's a really really good fake if that's well, the yeah. case. Yeah, yeah. And maybe by using a black and white thermal FLIR type screen or night vision, maybe you can bury edits or bury CGI a little bit easier. Um, you know, all of these things have to be taken in consideration. It's, you know, it's not your footage. It's not my footage. So we don't mm-hmm. know anything about it. It's, uh, yeah. it's just always going to be harder. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, those are the two big ones that I wanted to bring up. Again, they uh, it's older news stories, but when we were talking about the Goodyear blimp, I'm like, you know, I've seen some really impressive stuff uh, on here. And uh, hey, if people want to invest in seeing UFOs firsthand, you can do it for a relatively low price. Now you don't have to spend twenty five hundred bucks on third generation night goggles you can spend five hundred and fifty dollars on the psionics aurora and if you have a little more cash uh, go for the psionics pro sport and uh, those are color night vision monoculars on sale now now they are selling so good that uh, there's a waiting list for them but uh, it's an amazing affordable option to see in the sky the real McCoy because night vision affords you the opportunity to see this stuff. And uh, I remember when we were in Sedona and we went on a UFO tour and the gal handed me night vision for the first time, it just opened up a whole new world that you cannot see any other place. So anyway, that's a company called uh, Psyonix. I believe it's S Y O N I X and it's the Aurora 550 bucks. I don't know if, uh, you know, people getting their stimulus check or what's going on in America or in, <laughs> in Canada, but, um, you know, may, maybe uh, get yourself an early birthday present. I will think about doing that. Mm-hmm. And I also, I, I thought about um, the other day, I thought your chances of seeing an actual UFO are better during the daytime. Well, they could, that could very be, well be true unless they're operating in the night vision uh, format well, and, and yeah. infrared and you can't, you know, you burn out your lens. So um, I think that whatever's happening here largely seems to happen in a different, uh, a different, different spectrum. spectrum, different spectrum. Now, just yeah. to go over real quick. I do see the word shoes on Iovulus, which is a weird word to to bring up three times in a row. It also has the word prayer. And uh, I can't think of anything going on here except for one thing in particular that would relate to shoes and the possibility of a haunted shoe. And um, back in 2018, I went to an abandoned farmhouse in uh, near McMinnville, Oregon. And I just invited myself in. It was a dilapidated three-story vintage uh, colonial farmhouse. And I found an old leather boot 
and I took the boot and uh, <laughs> I used the boot as my tip jar when I would do live podcast in Cottage Grove at the pub. And I would set the supposed leather haunted boot on the bar stool. And if people wanted to drop a coin in there, they could. Now, is that what this iobulus is referring to? It Maybe. I, I'm not saying it's not. Maybe. Maybe, but um, I'll be damned if I know where that shoe is. And uh, maybe I should go find it and see if uh, there's anything to that. Maybe there's a shoe waiting for me in Toba Inlet. Albert Osman's shoe. <laughs> there we go. It could be. And here's the other thing, too, with these. Let's say they work. Let's say this thing is actually doing as it promised for a dollar 99 i doubt it but let's just you know say it is maybe it's looking at a non-linear time frame and these are things that have happened in a different uh, timeline or they haven't happened yet oh yeah yeah well you asked the question what awaits in toba inlet yeah, right. but I, I asked that question to you today, but I'm getting the same responses for other questions I asked two days ago. And so it's, Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. uh, Legion is definitely not one of the things I've seen before. Um, huh. So that's, 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 interesting. that's funny. We were, we were talking about, we, while we were doing the, that, we were talking about the HBI, which is like directly, pretty much directly across from the legion wait now say that again the the hbi harriet bay inn is pretty much directly across from the legion and we were talking about the hbi when it said legion oh interesting so maybe you're supposed to go there in november Mm, yeah and pray over a guy's shoe I don't know. Oh, you know what the other thing too is? I said I was cutting out grain, and it said it said uh, it said wheat. So maybe it's maybe an acknowledgement of uh, of a diet. I don't know. Okay. No, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's saying you should start eating your shoes. (laughs) I think it's probably saying I need to save my money instead of buying these stupid apps. (laughs) (laughs) It's the new COVID diet: eat your shoes. Now, it just said the word war. Uh, So the three words I see here now are pray or prayer, shoes, and war. Um, So I haven't seen the word war show up. But uh, anyway, you can check it out. iObulus is uh, something you can download. And, uh, you know, who knows what you got on your hand. So I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. So anything on here, you got to go now. And here we go. Okay, so that's shut off. So that's the only news I had in general here, Alex. Um, I know you've been super busy, so I don't expect you to have anything other than your uh, cool self. And uh, hey, you've been posting stuff uh, related to your commission work. So I thought you were easing up on commissions. Uh, (laughs) I tried to. And then I'm like, well, it's Christmas time coming up. So maybe I should just do a whole bunch of commissions and make a bunch of money. And yeah. So yeah, I totally revamped the shop. I, I bought some new tools. I made it super efficient. Uh, it, yeah. And I am just go, go, go with the commissions now. And I'm trying to find a, a good apprentice too. Um, someone who could do do the pieces that I don't really want to do anymore. Well, geez. Okay. So that sounds like, uh, you know, a, a one ad that you posted there. Are you looking for anything in particular? I am looking for someone with creative drive and good with tools. Other than that, I will teach you what you need to know. And do they need, they need to be local? We're not going on zoom training people. I imagine. No, no need to be local. So okay. If, any, if anybody on Quadra Island or mm-hmm. Campbell river is listening to uh, strange Road radio, yeah. Uh, give me a shout. Yeah, but that's not a terrible idea to uh, do a Zoom class tutorial with people. I mean, that's something. Uh, oh heck yeah! Totally. Maybe you could think about. Yeah, if anybody you know all yeah. over could. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Put you. I mean, it'd be hard to put you out of business here because I'm looking at your work right now in regards to uh, the salmon. That's a really yeah. good price on a, a a beautiful piece of art. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, uh, the salmon are very popular ones. So I'm just like pumping out the popular ones. 
ads and just making them and they're selling, they're selling and people are loving them. So. Perfect. And, um, uh, I should let people know that uh, I do wood watchers. I've sold uh, two in the last week. Uh, if you want to get a, a, a drifted creation by Alex Whitcomb, you can go to what drifted creations.com. Is that up and running? Uh, it's, it'll be re- up and running in the next two weeks, drifted creations art.com. So possibly uh, when this, uh, when this podcast comes out, uh, but uh, until then you can find me on Facebook, drifted creations, Vancouver Island or uh, Instagram drifted creations. All right. They're, they're really, yeah. I mean, I, we have a gift on our way right now of one of our family dogs that passed away. Oh, and, uh, that was so fun to make. That was just, I loved making that. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Yeah. I don't know how you did it, man. The I mean, Mr. it's a, a, a dead ringer for a really special dog, Mr. Stitches. And uh, yeah. so as soon as that gets there, it'll go in an important place. And uh, anybody that uh, wants a wood watcher, you can go on Facebook and, uh, you know, it's the holiday season's coming up. Christmas is near. Uh, just get one for yourself to make yourself smile. Uh, all these things are done with a sense of levity and whimsicalness and uh you know shipping costs will kill you on my end because i'm working with cedar logs uh generally (laughs) to ship something across the united states from west coast to east coast is upward of 75 bucks and so just consider that uh you know these things don't uh come free and then you have shipping on there so uh, i'm knocking those out if you want to take a look you can go on facebook and type in wood watchers or wood watcher and you will see uh my little uh, contribution to the art world, but I did. I want to just... see you create one of these. I want to be there when you create one of these. Uh, the vice versa, man. Let's uh, yeah, let's man. let's make that happen. Um, oh, totally. Before we got on air, I uh, ordered a new airbrush, and the main thing that it's been stopping me was my compressor air compressor broke, and my air uh, brush needle broke. So oh, I, I went I went on Amazon and I ordered a new airbrush, and I'll pick up. A, a compressor here shortly and uh, i'm gonna start making lifelike biggie heads now these are going to be brand new designs of different styles of realistic sasquatch bus with hair and um, they will be uh, silicone foam latex uh you know long realistic hair uh airbrushed uh to to match the same way that biggie was with glass eyes these will uh you know hopefully stand up to the realism test the same way that i hope biggie does and uh, they will be for sale here within hopefully the next month or two so look for okay dude sign me up okay sign me up i want one Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Let me and know. Let they me take know time, you know, you got to make a mother mold. Uh, first of all, you got to clay them out and then you got to make a mother mold and do your latex pour. So to do one of these is going to be uh, on commission basis a little bit, especially once I get the first one out. And, um, you know, because you don't want to make a bunch of them and just have, you know, $300 worth of supplies just sitting there to buy. I can't do that. So, um, Anyway, those will be coming up here before Christmas, uh, Drifted Creations on Facebook and uh, Wood Watchers. And then soon, um, I don't know what I'll call these, and maybe I'll just call them Biggie Bust or something like that. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can go for it. But hey, man, I know you're busy. You're sitting in your truck. I appreciate you hopping online as you always do. And um, yeah, any, any last thoughts? Well, yeah, I wanted to introduce uh, my new little venture here with the uh, the cryptid police sketches. Okay, yes. Yeah, we can't forget that. So go ahead. Yeah, totally. Um, I've been thinking about this for the past year, uh, and now just seems to be the right time to do it. Uh, so I'm going out there, uh, putting it out there, and offering my artistic services to experiencers of uh, the paranormal. Um, to do really good um, sketches of what people have seen. And I'm going to start off with some uh, local encounters, uh, some uh, Bigfoot sightings, Sasquatch sightings. I'm going to do some uh, some of my own sightings, uh, the, the weird witch uh, we encountered in Hope, uh, my gray experiences. And I'm going to put it out there 
Facebook, Instagram, website. And I think yeah, I'm going to call it uh, the Sasquatch Sketcher. Um, so that may change, but uh, I, I've just been kind of rolling with this uh, the past couple of days. So I'm really excited about it. And I'm really excited about, you know, having the opportunity to to give faces to what often is just uh, a verbal <clears throat> verbal account of uh, what people have witnessed. Well, I'm going to totally take you up on this and um, I can go back through the coffers of 94 episodes here and come up with a couple moments in particular. Oh yeah. Uh, my own. And I, I have a, a bit of a challenge here for you. Uh, maybe yeah. there is a way that we can use creative license here from a sound and you can do something like give a face to the mystery women. Uh, something oh, in that oh effect. My God. You know what I mean? The mystery like, women, they plague me. Oh. <laughs> I, I am so, I, I so want to figure this out with you. Oh my God. Right. And if people don't know, know, the mystery women, of course, are anomalous sounds from the Al Moon Lab. They've been sent to three military grade crypto linguists. One is a Canadian uh, member of the Royal Canadian Police or something to that effect, and work with Les Stroud. Um, been sent to Scott Nelson, another guy that uh, works uh, with. Uh, a guy from the Olympic Project who goes by the pseudonym Mahangahela. And uh, all three of these people um, have come back short. Now, what I can tell you is that uh, I can't prove it's a language. I can tell you that it sounds like it has a morphine stream, which is important. And I can tell you mm -hmm. it makes less sense backwards than it does forwards. It and does. I, I've done that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I'm not walking away with a whole lot more information other than the fact that people that listen to it say that they hear Russian and they hear Native American and they hear mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of a cockney vibrato or intonation to it. So um, I don't know. It would be interesting uh, to see yeah. someone have creative license, you know, knowing the fact that we're asleep when all this happens and this rope appears. And uh, anyway, that's an interesting challenge. I'm going to take you up on that for yeah, sure. Yeah, something to think yeah. about. And I'm going to I'm going to employ some interesting methods uh, and, to uh, to bring about who these uh, women are and and what okay. they may look like. And if yeah. you can prove to me, uh, you know, these sounds are readily available now online. If you can prove to me that these sounds have been transcribed into a known language, um, I'll be happy. And you'll have a free hoodie from Strange Brow Radio, a free copy of my audio book. And, um, you know, you can have a shot of Hornitos. And so it's a, it's a win, win, win. Why do you think I'm so invested in figuring out who these people are? I want that damn hoodie. <laughs> I know, hoodies aren't cheap, man. <laughs> Hoodies are not cheap. And anybody who orders a uh, uh, any merchandise from Teespring, they run really short. So I don't know where Teespring measures people, but, you know, they are measuring them uh, not not with the American frame in mind. These are they're pretty tiny. So um, I always go. Oh, my, my, mine's been OK. That is Canadians. Canadians are built differently. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, you are a little shorter. So the police sketches, okay, so people can reach out to you uh, through me or through you, Alex Whitcomb, uh, yep. or go to Drifted Creations on Facebook and just say, hey, man, I've, I've got a story. You've got an email, yep. too? Totally. Yeah, alexwhitcomb at gmail.com. So that's okay. Alex uh, Whitcomb, W-I-T-C-O-M-B-E. And, yeah, I'd uh, love to hear your stories as well because that's part of the part of this journey is uh, connecting yeah. with experiencers. And, right. And, uh, yeah. And the last bit of news here uh, is that there is a conference. It is a free conference. It is on October 3rd and 4th. And the way you get pre-registered for a ticket is you go right onto the website sasquatchrendezvous.com. And there you can uh, get a free link for the two-day conference. It will host uh, some amazing guests. Marcia K. Moore will be there uh, from Ancient Aliens, Barb Shoup 
from the infamous Cloaker video that I think has well over, I don't know, 20,000 views or more, maybe a lot more than that on YouTube. Uh, it also have Bob Gimlin, uh, who was uh, previously recorded for a couple hours just last week in a hot spot in Washington. He tells the scoop like never before. Uh, Mel Scahan, a Native American from uh, Yakima tribe, will be talking about uh, his experiences. Myself, Daryl Adams, uh, Andrea Billups will be there. And then the documentary crew from Resonance Production, uh, Brett Eichen Biger, I hope I'm saying that last name right, Brett and Jill, his wife, who are making this documentary, uh, who have interviewed a whole host of people as relatively newbies to this whole phenomena, will be online talking about the process and their own personal encounters and experiences at the Al Moon Lab, having some crazy stuff happen as cool. late as the last 24 hours. So really interesting uh, conversations to be had. That's a, a free event. And don't uh, one last thing, if you don't want to pre-register, which I don't know why you wouldn't, um, you can, you can follow it on Facebook. We're going to be live at the Strange Brow Radio Facebook page. Uh, there's an events tab underneath my name, Tobe Johnson. You can go to the Al Moon Lab Facebook page. You can go to Sasquatch Rendezvous. Find all these links. You can watch it on Facebook on Strange Brow Radio, October 3rd and 4th from 9 to 3. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, we put a lot of work into putting this on for you. It was a free event. It was a, a $30 ticketed event before, but the way the state is right now, we decided to refund some cash and make it free. I know that uh, Alien Con is also doing a free event, which is usually a ticket event, and they're doing their stuff online. So um, that seems to be the way it will go. And so I hope to see you all there. Alex, it was a pleasure, my man. And um, you too, Tobe. Always tell the missus hello and uh, go warm up, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Cheers, bud. Cheers. Okay, so let's get to these mystery ladies here. As promised, um, disclosure over the debunking, I believe, for the most part, if not totally, the debunking of these mystery women sounds. Now, if you don't know anything about these mystery women, you got to go back to the last episode to clue yourself in or check out the audiobook at uh, Strange Brow Radio. You can uh, go to strangebrowradio.com and download the audiobook. There's plenty of information about what this uh, next part of our conversation is going to be. So I've been looking for the last two years, including with, and we'll come back to this, to three supposedly military-grade crypto-linguists, crypto people that understand foreign language, especially from, well, we'll just say, old communist territory. And the sounds that we're, I'm about to play, I'll play them again for you, these, these mystery women. Um, in short, we were uh, getting all sorts of strangeness at this property, and one of the more inexplicable sounds that we were trying to get translated was the sound of these mystery women. Now, I hear more than one woman talking in this audio, but as we slept unencumbered by any intruders, or so we thought, inside this enclosed space with all the doors open, mind you, uh, I go back to review some audio the next morning to see if anything approached us, and there was the sound of, well, these mystery women. So let me play this audio again. <laughs> Okay, so untranscribable according to cryptolinguists, military grade cryptolinguists, which is interesting because then I put it out online. I put it in social media to see if I could find anybody that could transcribe this audio. Now, initially, when we heard this, I said Russian. It sounded Russian to me. It was. Uh, a long shot, but it, I felt as though this was a Russian EVP, possibly. We just didn't know. I mean, things got so bonkers in that place. Even that night, they were bonkers. And I was leaning on the fact that it was maybe just supernatural in, a, in an event. 
Now, this doesn't totally outrule it being a supernatural event, but for the most part, I think it does. Once I put this out on Facebook a couple weeks ago, I uh, had a guy named Sean Perkins, who's a Patreon member, and he got a hold of the audio and started floating it around on Reddit, including, I believe, a Russian version of Reddit, and asked anybody if they could recognize the phraseology or what language it was. Someone immediately got back to him and says, I know what audio that is. It's this crazy video of these Russian women at a zoo or a sanctuary. And it's uh, semi-well-known, at least to this guy. I don't know if it's just in Russian circles. However, that audio is a little bit different, but for the most part, pretty much the same as the audio we captured so let me play you the lion tamers, the Russian lion tamer video that I believe belongs to this audio. Okay, so an exact match as far as I can tell. Now, we never see this woman's face. We only see her pointing a camera at a lion getting into a golf cart of all things it's you know just a wacky video of a russian zoo the line's not on a leash it's crawling all over tourists this woman's filming the whole thing now how did that erupt and get on to our recorder and then how did we sleep through it also what are the strange hits and slap sounds in our recording that's not in this one how did the phone get turned on, period, without someone touching it? Um, we, there's so much we don't know. But that's why I always put the audio out there for people to help me find out what's going on. It really was the only time that we left a recorder with a phone nearby. it. The Most of the time, the phone, unfortunately, now looking at all the radiation spikes coming off of iPhones, uh, were in our pockets. So... Uh, that's interesting. Now, Daryl's phone was messed with by the phenomena. That's just the way it went. Um, I wrote about it recently on a Facebook thread. I'm going to talk about it again at Sasquatch Rendezvous with him on air. Also, people have experienced this themselves coming to the property, not only with electronics, but just we have confirmation from other people, thank God. So, when you listen to that audio, and now we have a translation, I believe in Russian, according to what I looked at online via Sean Perkins' uh, post on Reddit, it looks like a translation of a video that was posted two years ago, and the audio is from two years ago, same month, everything. This is the weird part, is that in the video, and you can look this up on Facebook, you can see my post about it, under Tobe Johnson or the Strange Brow Radio or Al Moon page, is that we were asleep inside a giant metal shop with green, specifically uh, forest green walls, was the paint color. Now, this is the first thing you see in this video with this Russian lion tamers or at this Russian zoo is the lion getting up from the side of these metal green walls. Now, maybe all the walls that are metal are painted green for cost value, or maybe there's one distributor decide to paint all these metal shop walls green. I don't know. It's, it's pretty curious to me, and given the fact that there were so many things that were given to us that were significant to things we were talking about or things we had previously owned or mentioned, maybe this is one of those things. Maybe this is a video of significance. Um, Anyway, super bizarre. Uh, I don't know if it's... Maybe it's even more bizarre than what I thought was going on, which was a uh, ripple in time and uh, basically Star Trek phaser 
type action or Star Trek teleportation type action happening. Anyway, maybe too much Twin Peaks in my world to to that effect. But anyway, that's the uh, that's the audio. Now the book is out, and I mentioned the weirdness of these women, and I think it comes towards the end of the book. So, am I going to re-edit the book and uh, expound on that? Well, I might, I might, and and I'll definitely explain it the same way I am here as well, because this is all I know. Or I may just leave it and go on to the next book and and bring this chapter up. Because there's certainly plenty of digital weirdness, including everything you've heard on here. My phones being able to record for over 13 hours on internal memory, not going into the iCloud. That's insane. Um, So that was on three different iPhones, mind you. So we're used to the digital shenanigans. Anyway... That's uh, what I wanted to mention to you in full transparency. Uh, Russian lion tamers caught on audio. (laughs) And if you don't think it's Russian, get back to me. Listen to it again. I I had a person get back to me and say, that's absolutely not Russian. But then I've had people get back to me and say they hear Atlantean, Enochian. They hear Aramaic. They hear uh, alien. So I don't think so. I I think the easiest answer is to say this is a video that somehow uh, erupted into an audio spectrum. And, interesting, our our bravest vets that have uh, reportedly at least listened to this audio once or twice uh, were not able to translate Russian. That's kind of scary. I, I hate to say it, but if they listened to it and didn't hear it, and it is Russian... And you have to go to Reddit. Um, I don't know what to say. I'm just wondering if it was ever listened to at all. I'm keeping it uh, transparent, not translucent here at Strange Brow Radio. And if you want to be a guest, well, get a hold of me. Strangebrowradio at gmail.com. Don't forget Sasquatch Rendezvous at sasquatchrendezvous.com. Also live on the Strange Brow Radio Facebook page. You can see the events tab. Come on board. Uh, here, Bob Yemlin. Should be a good time. Two days, October 3rd and 4th. And as always, I will see you in the trees. Okay, so now that we've gone through the motions of debunking what are now Russian lion tamers, I want to talk about the garage a little bit more. 
So for this little Easter egg, I'll tell you that around 2018, I was doing monthly shows on KPNW radio show, and I would bring in different subject matters and talk for 15 or 20 minutes and promote my live event with a DJ named Bill London. And while I was on air with him, we struck up a conversation with him and the gal that did the wine segment, Julia. So I invited Julia and Bill out to the property to do a little bit of investigations on or around the property, in particular in the shop. So what you're about to hear is Julia the wine taster, uh, new to the property but not new to the phenomena, and is inside doing a night sit while we are outside listening. And we, of course, <clears throat> had a speaker lined through to a recorder which was placed in the garage not that you always needed it, but it amplified everything. And there we sat maybe 50 yards away listening to what she was hearing inside this locked garage. So you're going to hear her encounter with something in the dark inside this locked space. So enjoy. Why are you tiptoeing around in here making noise? It's okay to make noise. I won't run. I know I was going to before, but now I won't. Okay, so that was Julia's experience. We sent in the uh, DJ Bill London, and he got a couple taps, nothing really significant when he was in there, which he wasn't really surprised at. I think he was more annoyed at the process. Um, <laughs> then we sent in my friend Francis Grumley, who is a, uh, a neighbor of sorts from the other side of the lake. And Francis went in and did her night sit and there was something inside blowing, um, like a human trying to whistle, but couldn't, or blowing out candles. But here's the audio of Francis. Again, we're 50 yards away, 25 yards away outside the door. And we all hear this through the speaker. What? Are you blowing? No. <laughs> I just love that audio. <laughs> I love her uh, nervous no. <laughs> uh, what a thing to to <laughs> to hear for for both of us. But it wasn't always like that. Sometimes sounds would happen, and you could hear them on digital devices, but you couldn't hear them with your own ear. And this is an example of that. Uh, my girlfriend Erin. Is she's now the guinea pig inside the garage. And we all hear what sounds like three taps on the cement floor. It sounds like knuckles maybe hitting down three times on the cement floor. So that's what you're about to hear, and she didn't hear it. So this is interesting. All right, so I don't know how that would uh, be happening unless you have that layer caking theory at work. I did hear her uh, walking uh, after we heard those three taps. It, maybe her bones were cracking and she didn't notice it. I don't know. They were pretty separated taps. And there might have actually been four there, but we definitely had a lot of things with the number three. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed those sounds, and we will see you next week.